I had a substitute teacher. She used to say, now, class, you're all pretty, and we're going to sing our song. <laughs> <laughs> we're all in our places with some shiny faces. Oh, you know that one. That, that <laughs> anyway, uh, my folks uh, came from St. Louis, Missouri, where I was born in 1918. They came here in 1920. My dad was a high steel worker. Uh, he uh, worked on the high with, uh, Mississippi Bridge, and his partner was raining and snowing. His partner fell 40 feet and killed him. And that just about did my dad in. The other thing, there was a deep depression. There was a, a flu going on. It was time to move. And my aunt lived in, on Blanche over here. Hmm. So they talked to him in the moon about there. That's how we arrived in the middle of the night uh, in uh, 1920. I'll tell you a little about that. My dad arranged it, of course. We came by steam engine. So we'd ride right in the middle of the day, you know, at noon time. The trouble was in Higgins, Kansas, there was a train wreck, a terrible one. And we were delayed for 12 hours. Not our train, but that. And we arrived, what did you expect? At midnight. <laughs> no headlight, I mean, no street lights, no telephone, no nothing. <laughs> and no road. He got off at Rosecrans, and the only thing to get over to Branch Road in Standard Park uh, was to take a boardwalk. Mm -hmm. And that boardwalk stayed until about 1924. Yeah. It was about seven feet wide, old tree limbs and a piece of lumber were the ties. Mm -hmm. And my folks were their personal thing. And I had a sister and three brothers, oh. and we all had to climb that hill. Mm -hmm. You walked up Rosecrans, you know, <laughs> carrying all their stuff <coughs> on this boardwalk at midnight. Yeah. Next time, finding my cousin. Anyway, um, I uh, I uh, joined uh, first grade first. First grade uh, at Manby School in 1924, almost over 1924. That was my first grade class. We had 28 people in it. None of them were left. I researched and researched. There was only one left. Wilmer Drake, as some of you probably know. Yeah. And uh, he passed away a couple of years ago. He came in 1924. <coughs> well, my day is kind of typical. I get up and I usually, uh, first thing, I, I stay in bed, you know, for a while, and I get up at noon and then I get ready for my afternoon nap. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any uh, veterans here? Are there any in World War II? No, no, I went in after Korea. Well, I was in World yeah. War II. Mm -hmm. uh, I um, well, graduated from Redondo High School in 1936. Mm -hmm. I got my driver's license in 1935, mm -hmm. and it was signed by the sergeant of the Manhattan Beach Department. I took no tests, as I recall. It cost me 25 cents. And I was driving my Model T, which I drove to high school. Uh, I have photos of it, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, I went to Taft Junior College, graduated from there, and then on into uh, uh, Fresno State Teachers College. Sound familiar to anybody? <laughs> anyway. Uh, I took up flying, and the government decided they would take 20 men, and I was chosen as one. Uh, <coughs> and we would be trained in our flight training uh, and go overseas, wherever, never told us where. Uh, and we would uh, 
go over as, as a unit. <coughs> it's an excellent idea. <coughs> I no more completed that class. I was uh, so-called second in command. And uh, my motorcycle and I in the truck got in a big argument in the truck one. Started <laughs> 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 my face off, broke my jaw, all kinds of stuff. And I found I couldn't use oxygen at high altitude. So in May of uh, May 12th, 1941, before the war, I got my private license. I had taken the advanced aerobatic. Uh, but since then, I renewed in 1959 uh, from an excellent uh, aerobatic flyer. I thought I'd go in the business get like all young guys. Mm -hmm. The competition was so great and so expensive. Anyway, from there, uh, in the meantime, uh, the first aircraft carrier uh, ever, built, ever built in the United States was called the Langley. I have a few pictures. I don't have enough for everybody, but I just turn those around, please. And uh, the Langley set off was the very first aircraft carrier of the, United, well, of the world. It was built in Mare Island, uh, up by Vallejo. Everybody, anybody ever been to Vallejo? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the island is beautiful, Mare Island. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, the first commander there, and it was the first naval uh, shipyard on the West Coast, 1854, Commander Burma, very good. He was a guy who said, Damn the torpedoes <laughs> supposed to be dead. Mm -hmm. You remember Mobile Bay? And if you go there, of course, that's where my daughter lives. Uh, the uh, Vallejo annexed it in 1996. But there are beautiful, big colonial homes that are still there. And if you ever go on there too, they have the first and most picturesque uh, naval uh, chapel there. All the windows are by Tiffany of New York. Really beautiful. A lot of weddings. Um, the, the museum is in a 60,000 square foot building. It's got all the parapets and all the other uh, paraphernalia from the Navy. It's really something to see. And it's, uh, they have a historical site. Uh, you know, it, 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 it might pass those around to Yeah, I kind of share it. There was a man here, kind of, who asked about North American aviation. <laughs> Have you ever worked for North American Aviation? Grandfather did. Yeah. Well, we built a, when I couldn't fly for the Army, I did go into flying at North American Aviation. And we were building P-51, P-51 aircraft, four to six of these every 24 hours. Wow. Mm -hmm. Going over 15,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And Pat, was that in that same building over here on aviation where they're building the F 18s? That really long structure on aviation? Is that where they were building the P 51? Uh, it could be. took over the Douglas map, which is across Imperial, mm -hmm. on the south side. Hmm. Which at the time was the largest all wood building in the world. That's the same one there. They're yeah. still building F 18s in there today. Oh, yeah. Right. Yep. <coughs> uh, Pat, what aspect of the P 51 did you work on? Pardon me? Uh, what aspect of the P 51 did you work on? Which one? 
Which part of the P-51 did you work on? Well, I didn't really work on it. I was in flight. Oh. Yeah, he was not an engineer. He was in flight. Well, we, changed, we, were, Pilot. we were continually changing the contracts and the design. Uh, when the war started in Europe, Britain licensed North America, which was in Dundalk, Maryland, to build P-40s. Well, Kinderberger and Atwood, two chief men, one was the president and the other was chief engineer, uh, said, no way, we're going to go build a P-40, we'll build our own. Mm -hmm. So in 127 days, from the time they designed it to the time they built that, oh, oh 127 God. days, they delivered it. <laughs> So were you a test pilot? That's what I was going to ask. I was considered a co-pilot. Okay. And uh, I, I flew in the uh, P-82 with a twin, twin engine. Or was two of these came together. Was that called the Black Widow? No, the twin no. Mustang. Twin Mustang? Yeah, twin Mustang. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, PE2. They were all built right here in this plant, three miles away. It was convenient to me because uh, I stayed in flight until the F-100s, which is a very remarkable aircraft. As a child, I remember seeing those flying overhead. And you may have been in one of those I watched <laughs> flying overhead. I don't know. Anyway, um, it. If you don't have this book, I recommend you get it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bonnie Baker's. Oh, my own two six six. Okay, there's a lot of fine pictures. Yeah. One picture is particularly good because it's me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wrote my book, my Model T, and you got the job. Anyway, all about this time, 1934, they built an oil well there on about 33rd Street. Anybody here then? Remember the oil well? <coughs> I worked around the oil well, not on the oil well, you understand, when I was in high school. Uh -huh. 15 cents an hour. <laughs> and, and just move this board, do that, whatever they told me to do. Uh -huh. So that was pretty good. But Where did that you get that book? Where? Yeah. Oh, you can buy it right here. And right here for ten dollars. Yeah. Uh, ten dollars each. In this building? Yeah. 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 Right oh. here. Oh, we used to bought thirty-five or something. Yeah. yeah. It used to be twenty-five. Mm -hmm. That's a remarkable book. Oh, I think that would be a marvelous gift. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I had a lady uh, that uh, did, in the post office. You know Johnny Campbell. He was our neighbor on six. Yeah. Well, his daughter uh, bought eight of them. <laughs> <laughs> she came in. I, I really sold my day. Yeah. Oh. Another remarkable book is this one. In and now, the whole coast, including Manhattan. Hmm. Cool. Somebody mentioned her, he did. Uh, that was British. In 1923, they opened up Pellisbury, oh. and my folks and I went. There were no trees, no <laughs> nothing, but a big tent down there. <laughs> and I have photos at home of taking the same place. Oh, yeah. But in 1923, they opened it up. Oh. You, if you like to come to any of this. <laughs> One thing that really kind of bugs me is, <clears throat> Whenever he had, he had, I had an opportunity to speak to the council on that, and I spoke about it. I'll go back to this one. I thought this was kind of funny. Mm -hmm. This is the type of airport there was in 1927. Oh, wow. and, uh, if you look at it carefully. Mm -hmm. So take it off or something. Mm -hmm. One thing.
day we, uh, in 1922, first we lived on farming in Standard Oil over the hill. And then my dad uh, worked for Mr. Peck and uh, bought a cottage from him, 452 32nd Street. And we hear a lot about San Diego Park. Yeah. Well, it's just the wrong place in the first place. Down here, here, I'm passing. Here's where it is. But part way up there, this is Murphy had his corrals for his mules. And the mules were used both for his own use. Uh, because you plant the barley, but also for, for grading and uh, help grading island and others. But uh, really, the part, the fun part, was 32nd Street, right here. Uh, right. That's all vegetation. Yeah, and then uh, the next one was the Cotton Fishing was so good back then, back in high school. Really good. And uh, many of the large sea bass were caught off the pier. And I have a lot of sea bass pictures. So the bass way between normal and 250 and the 350 on the Wow. The larger we caught was 600. In ten I like to fish too, so uh, I bring out here. Well, you got your priorities in order. <laughs> I stayed in the delivery flight of air and uh, I couldn't use oxygen in high altitude. Uh, first place, North American, uh, when they built this airplane, said overseas. It wouldn't fly as fly at high altitude. It only had 1,100 horsepower engine in it. And then they put a road, that was in Allison. And then they put a Merlin in at 1,600. And a P 51 fighter is considered the finest fighter that was ever developed in the war. And with drop tanks, it was the only fire that could escort the bombers by the thousand over Berlin in return. Mm -hmm. uh, many men were killed, but it uh, was the only one. I uh, stayed in flight until 44 and uh, decided I'd get for service. And I joined the 82nd Airborne Division. You had, you had to volunteer to be a paratrooper. I think the, I think the submarine service is considered a hazardous pay, <laughs> so you got fifty dollars a month extra. And people in Burbank say, "Well, why do you want to join that fifty bucks?" <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I went overseas and jumped. <laughs> Another story. You were in Europe. Yes, ma'am. France and Germany. With the parachutes. Yeah. We got banged up a little bit, but second time. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? So, Pat, do you have a pension from North American? Pardon? Did you get a pension from North oh, American? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, not for Roger, but Boeing, good Boeing. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, my. So, you were in that industry for a long time? Well, I was at the plant. Two years I was in the service, mm -hmm. uh, 40 years. Oh, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. And yes, I get my pension, <coughs> my medical, everything. Very nice. Boeing has treated me mighty well. Okay. Yeah. Would you have considered yourself a test pilot? Pardon? 
I say, would you have considered yourself a not test really. pilot? Not really, because I've always been more or less in the second. Say, Pat, uh, Bill for, uh, I can say, uh, at one time the Manhattan Beach Pier extended another 200 feet out. Yeah. Did, did you ever fish off that uh, extended Oh, that was, what were nice to fish. Fishing was so good. Mm -hmm. And we had seven barges all in oh. three cities. Mm -hmm. We got a from Manhattan. Oh, seven. Wow. All of these were originally square rig sailing vessels, <coughs> commercial. And the uh, owners would chop off most of the uh, mast, high mast, and put heavier ballast in. Mm -hmm. And uh, were they gambling ships? And Doctor Lar or uh, Captain Lar Larson had the Georgina off of Manhattan, okay. about a mile and a half out. And this this book is loaded with the whole thing. Mm -hmm. In April, April of uh, 1985. And trouble storm and wash ashore. They all did. Say during during the week, would there have been a lot of people on the fishing pier, literally fishing for their meals? Oh, uh, again. Oh, yeah. You're looking at his book. Mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Well, I know if I, I go down now during the weekdays, so you don't have the crowds, but I think oh, at that no, time. Oh no, it used to be. Mm -hmm. My brother mm -hmm. in 1922. Caught the largest hell of it mm -hmm. of the year. Uh -huh. he, he used a, a lamb from a new grocery street and had a sidewinder wooden reel. All of it. He, 13 and a half pounds. Jeez. And he said he gave him some. I, don't know, but, uh, I thought that was pretty neat. I'm going to show you a picture. This was taken from the deck of our house. Oh, oh. The picture, this was the extension of the pier. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So, Pat, have, have you lived in the same home for a very long time? Yes, I was about 60, 60 years? 67 years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All through high school, I was 450, 452, 450 to 32nd Street. <clears throat> that's where you are now? No, that's where I graduated when I was in high school. I see. <laughs> yes, uh, I might tell you, uh, think about it, things have really changed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, for instance, I never saw a whale, really, up close, off the pier or off the boat. Huh. I went out whenever I could to the barge, and there were rare occasions. I went out with Oscar Brown and Bassett, my bait boat, and we go out. I never <laughs> saw a whale up close. And never even thought about a porpoise or a dolphin. Huh. None. And on a rare occasion, you see a seal. But that was it. That's all new. So we have no more fish or well, large bass, but we've got lots of dolphins, lots of whales. Yeah. Yeah. And great white sharks now. <laughs> yeah. 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 And throw in a hammerhead or two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One thing that you didn't have either was crows. Uh, we have no parrots. Anybody have any parrots? Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I think that's one thing we forget and how much progress we've made because everybody who's lived here a long time remember what the smog used to be here. Oh, we don't have that anymore. Yeah. And, and the ocean is so much cleaner than it was. That's why mm -hmm. we have dolphins and whales. Yeah. Because the, the Hyperion is so much cleaner and there's no, we don't have sewage in the water. We have clams. We have re, re, you know, resurgence yeah. of marine life and much cleaner air. That's oh, big yeah. progress. Nobody well, we used to have, no, that's, that. that's we used to have a lot of Is that partly of because they cleaned uh, up uh, Hyperion? That, here, Hyperion? that would make a difference in the fish. Huge difference. In 1922, my folks bought a new Ford touring car. <laughs> and my two older brothers, one out on one of the other, and in the neighborhood, they laid their breeze all in North Manhattan. <laughs> going up back, they'd have to back up some of them. Do the church. But uh, it used to get so foggy from time to time. I have very little of that now. But it was all swampy ground. Uh, over in Torrance, awful lot of 
much longer. Though. We don't even seem to have as much June gloom as we used to. No, no I agree. <laughs> Not the last couple of years. No. Mm -hmm. Last four or five years has changed. I remember when we used to have fog. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I, mean, I yeah. remember driving through fog, especially in December. My memory is it was like December, yeah. January. We would have like real fog. Real fog. And I, I don't think that I can't remember when we've had that kind of, you know, oh, situation. Yeah, you know, coming in from Los Angeles, even on the bus, you come up over the hill, uh, you come down, plow down way, whatever. Gosh. Pat, you mentioned a an oil well on 33rd Street. Yes. Where was that on 33rd? Well, it was in a corner. Robertson's lived right back in the corner. Oh, right what? back in her backyard. I have a picture of me on top of it. <laughs> oh, really? what, what corner of what 33rd? Cross street. What cross street? Oh, Blanche. Oh, Blanche. Oh, yeah. 33rd? But yeah. you, shouldn't you say that it was a was dry well? Well, it was a dry well, but they kept digging. They had some promise of, of oil, but they finally gave it up. Hmm. They kept it up. It's probably still kept up there. Which could be the sliding door for the time for Manhattan Beach, right? <laughs> well, remember all the oil wells along Venice. Oh, yeah. Along yeah. the beach is nothing but oil tank. That's right. Yeah, the forties. Oh. Uh, and honey buggies really sing well. well. Yes. It goes oh, they capped it. You know how deep it went. Oh. Excuse me, it was thirty-four feet or something. Uh -huh. I mean, that's uh, thirty-four feet. Thirty-four hundred. Wow. <laughs> One thing, this is fellow birdies. Uh, that's what she called it. One thing I wanted to point out, which I thought was an interesting fact, you just gave up your driver's license this last year yeah. after how many years of driving? Exactly 80. 80 years of driving. <laughs> and I gave it up not because I didn't feel confident in driving. Everybody ever rode with me never made a derogatory remark about it. But uh, I gave it up because if I got into a wreck, they say, well, that's an old man's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably sitting in the home. That's why I gave up mine last year. <laughs> they said, well, we'll give you a test now. Well, I took the written test out to us. Do you have children that live in town? Do you have children that live in town or relatives? No, I have one daughter. She lives on Bear Island. Uh, what are they? On where? Oh, there's two. Uh, at Vallejo. Yeah. Oh, they are right. beautiful, big, two short. Whoa. When the, when the no, shipyard was shut no, down no. Um, in 1996, Vallejo, and they were right across this the Bay, yeah, way back uh, two bridges. Oh, this is from Osa, right? the and, uh, and, uh, ships came, big ships came in there. Uh, they just went in there and built 1,400 new homes. Oh, no. This is come. where Manhattan took it. Where you ever go to Marana? Pat, what do you perceive the future of Manhattan to be? Well, one thing that really bugs me, <laughs> and I've expressed this openly, <laughs> even the council, <laughs> is the width of the beach. I think it's, I think it's 506 feet across. And that is really something. <laughs> So what is it that bugs you, Pat? Well, the width of the beach. The width of, <laughs> the width of it. So much sand. Yeah. Can't get to the water. Yeah, we dumped a lot of sand on the yes. beach from... Yeah, it all came from the Hyperion plant mm -hmm. dunes. Excuse me. i got to take this. Okay. Yeah, that, that people coming from inland as it were, they think they're going to walk across that nice soft sand. Mm -hmm. If you ever walked to Barefoot 